this episode. Welcome to Books Boys, live from the Grand Library. The Dean and PJ. He's PJ. Hello there, everyone. I'm the Dean. We are the Books Boys, but I think that there's three of us today. Um, we're not the Books Boys today. We're the Poetry Pals. Who have we got with us? <laughs> Hi, I'm San from India. Hi, sir. We've got San on the line. Yeah. And do you want to you tell us about um, about your show and about why we're um, why we're doing a crossover? Uh, not really. <laughs> just kidding <laughs> just kidding so my uh, show is called the little word and i like you guys started it because i have a love for poetry and books and writing and i have the utmost respect for writers everywhere all around the world and uh, in fact that's the latest season uh, you know in the latest season i'm paying homage to all the writers that i grew up reading and uh, poets that i like basically so i'm basically reading out their pieces on the podcast oh. So that's what the latest season is all about. Awesome. Uh, and who would these authors be? If you could mention a few of them. Uh, uh, right now I have uh, Gareth Egan Words and Emina Gaspar. And okay. uh, there are quite a few others lined up. Awesome. Okay. I like the sound yeah. of it. Uh, yeah. what, made you deci- what made you decide to do a season about um, writers you grew up with and writers you adore? What made you decide to do this because I think the way I fell in love with writing was through poetry. And I used to spend hours on Instagram scrolling through these poets' feeds. And, uh, you know, sometimes there would be a post that would help me get through a particular day or a particular emotion. Because, you know, it was like, oh, my God, they found the words for what I'm feeling, you know. So nice. it felt befitting to give it back like that, like to give a tribute like that. That it's their yeah. words, but my voice. Mm-hmm. Also, yes, yeah, it's like saying kind of uh, thank you for the help you've yeah. given me now. And now you're sharing, you're, now you're trying to help the world, maybe, like trying to exactly. do your part. Exactly. Wow, awesome. Uh, I like yeah. the sound of it, yeah. And has, has, poetry also, has poetry always been important to you, you know, growing up? Absolutely. I think I come from a family of academicians and uh, it's my grandfather who made me fall in love with poetry. And, oh. you know, he used to nudge me a little bit here and there that, you know, you should try it and give it a shot and Obviously, the initial ones I wrote were absolute crap, but he made sure I stuck to it, and uh, here we are. Well, awesome, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you write yeah. poetry yourself? Yes, I do. I have a book, actually. Awesome. It came out quite wow. a few years ago. Yeah. What, what's the name of the book? Uh, Rhythm and Rhyme by Sunandini. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. And that's okay. very interesting because we are working on a poetry book. Um, oh, Wow. Well, no, I'm yeah. not a poet. Uh, I can I can't write to save my life. But PJ is a poet, and uh, I'm an artist. So what we've been doing mm-hmm. is illustrated poems. Oh, that's great! Exactly. So it's oh, kind of like um, so. I would write a poem, and and he would uh, paint the painting. At least as far, or vice versa. Okay, I'm, I'm calling. I'm calling dibs on the first copy now. <laughs> awesome! Awesome! As soon as awesome. it's Please out. Do. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. We're just uh, finishing it up, and he uh, so. Basically, yeah, or he might write a uh, he might draw a painting. I might write a poem, and he's also mm-hmm. done illustrations for uh, for my novel. Uh, mm-hmm. And they're both like we're just trying to get them published now, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's a lot of fun collaborating. And yep. right, brothers, do you, do you collaborate with other artists? I mean, in the sense of like, do you write poems for paintings, or have you done anything like that before? No, not really. I haven't. Okay. Okay. Well, what what do I you think about being like, uh, like as an artist? How do you feel like when you collaborate with others? Is it different? Oh, I love it because it's 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 amazing. I mean, to feed off of another person's energy and to have ideas that you would never have probably by yourself. You know, it's yeah. it's like a beautiful thing because I used to work for this company called Letters. It's a US okay. based company, and we had like writers from all over the world, and the format was letter writing. So you could basically write whatever it is that you wanted in the form of a letter. And I think oh. it was beautiful because we had collaborations going on all over the place. And, you know, I was the mentor to quite a few writers and it was fun. Yeah. We got oh, quite okay, a few yeah. ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and some, sometimes, um, 
sometimes it's just uh, I feel like you get stuck in the same universe and the same themes and it becomes a bit repetitive and it's nice yes. that when people collaborate and something new happens absolutely absolutely yeah, but good. I think you know when you collaborate with somebody from a different uh, environment altogether that's even more productive yeah. like oh, you right, know, yeah, if yeah. you go across countries and uh, continents and yeah so then that's a whole new world opening up yeah, yeah I know what you mean yeah then it's something completely different right um yeah, no, it's a, it's a great thing. Uh, how do you think poetry? How do you think poetry is uh, relevant in today's world? Because I, I get a lot of people. They come to me and they say, "Oh, I I don't get poetry. No, it's I'm too. I'm my life is too busy. I might listen to music, but poetry, I just don't get it. I think it's antiquated." What would you say to people like that? So you know that's ironical because when you actually think about it, uh, music is just poetry that has been you know. Yeah, with a tune to it probably that's just yeah, poetry definitely. in a different form so I feel like it's more relevant today than ever because more of us are lonely than we care to admit and you know reading somebody else's words kind of makes you feel like you're not alone in what you're going through as a human because it is yeah. shocking how common the themes are to what we go through you know like we all suffer oh. for the same reason it's the same things that make us, make us all happy as human beings and poets have found a way to express that I feel like in an increasingly isolated world, you know, it's a way of peeking through into the human soul and knowing that you're not the only one who's going through what you're going through. Mm, I know what you mean. Totally yeah. right. So, so it's another way of connecting and just like songs, it's just, it's the same thing. Except that, Absolutely. Uh, except music. Um, Absolutely. Oh yeah. Cool. And do you feel like, uh, what, what would you say to people? Like I wanted to ask you about uh, poetry in India. Because they might have mentioned that I've been uh, getting into German poetry because I'm half mm-hmm. German, half Irish. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. some of the themes I see, particularly like around 19th century German poetry, it's like everyone's getting together to form a nation. Yeah. Because Germany yeah. didn't become, become Germany um, until I think 1870. And so mm-hmm. all these poets come together and they, and they talk about being German and, and forming a nation. And... And because before they were split, and I meant to ask mm-hmm. you about uh, about India and poets in India. Yeah. I don't know so that the Indian poetry thing. scene, the Indian poetry scene is, I think, more vibrant than ever before nowadays. But uh, oh. it's become a little, uh, you know, underground now because uh, oh, okay. poets kind of feel like they don't have the kind of freedom of expression that they want. So it's more okay. underground and invitation only. And there are these amazing get-togethers where the energy is just incredible. And wow. uh, yeah, and there are a lot of young poets, and they have a lot to say. So I love seeing that. You know. Awesome. So so all these underground yeah. meetings. So that sounds very exciting. It's literally that you just. It's kind of like not many people know about it, and a poet yeah, has to yeah. tell another poet about it. Yeah, yeah. You just post uh, online or on your network, and just you know, whoever can make okay. it can come to the venue and uh, listen to other poets speaking. Or you wow. know, even if you want to host a poetry meeting, you can do that. So. Yeah. Wow. Okay. How how is it with all the languages India has? Because uh, what what's the main language poets, uh, you know, do their poetry? I think is English it... English these days because they want to reach really? a global audience, so they use a okay. lot of English. But there's a lot of regional poetry going on as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And I mean, I I would imagine that that would be important to keep that. I mean, do you think that? Yeah, I mean, okay, anyone can write a poem in English because obviously, yes, you're right, that mm-hmm. gives a more global audience, but yeah. do you think it's important to keep, you know, to keep poems in the local language of the countries they're written Absolutely. in as well? Absolutely, because, you know, there's a flavor to it when you're writing in your own language that you simply yeah. cannot have. Like, you know, yeah. there are Persian poets and their poetry has been translated to English, yes, but they themselves have said that it loses something in the translation, right? Yeah. Totally, yeah. Obviously, because uh, the language you've grown up with, the words that you use since you were five, are going to lend it a different character, a different flavor to what you're writing. So you cannot have that in translation. It gets lost somewhere, I feel. Wow, yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, has... finding, I'm finding that, PJ, you know that I read recently for our last episode some Spanish novels, and I, I read mm-hmm. them in Spanish because I think that when you when you switch to a translation, you by definition, you lose mm-hmm. something of the, of the character mm-hmm. of the piece, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally right. Yeah, and especially poetry, I find that's uh, even harder to translate than uh, than uh, absolutely. Poetry. So yeah, absolutely. It's, it's um, 
I do yeah. love uh, parallel texts, you know, when they have the original and then they might have the original text. Say, in, yeah, in, that's in yeah, that's English. like the best thing. Yeah. I yeah, right? that. so you, that's my because then you keep you keep the music, but you can, yeah. but you know, if you're not fluent in the language, but you might you understand the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I do love that. Yeah. Um, so I've got I've got lots of like penguins books with uh, French poetry with the English like with lower mm -hmm. type uh, writing beneath. It's lovely. Wow, yeah. awesome! That sounds great. Uh, yeah. I meant to ask you: Do you, do you feel like uh, reciting one of your poems, or do you feel like reciting a poem in a show that you particularly love, or that means something to you? You beat me to it. I was going to ask the same thing. <laughs> you definitely want to hear some poetry. <laughs> and it was just World Poetry Day two days ago, so we're we're yeah, right on it the was oh. yeah. I love reading yeah, exactly. the pieces yeah. that people came up with. It's beautiful. Awesome, yeah. So a lot, a lot of good poets out there. Yeah. Love young poetry. So this and, one, yeah. this one is a little, uh, you know, it's like a love poem kind of a thing. So I don't do too many of those on the podcast, but for some reason, I really like this one. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'll just start. Okay. A seductress should never have a heart, and if she does, she should keep it protected, hidden, quiet. No one should hear it beating, no matter how close they come. A seductress should never fall in love. It defeats the whole purpose of who she is and what she's meant to do. She should hide the shadows in her eyes, cover up all the marks love leaves on her body, and when the hair on her arm rise up in anticipation of his touch, she should turn her face away, cold as ice. A seductress knows all this, and yet she also knows that her heart, faint, fragile, free-spirited as it may be, is no match for the magnificent beast that is love. A beast who knows that she is a formidable foe, who neither surrenders nor succumbs that easily, and yet is tempted to see just how far he can push her until she unravels inevitably. Wow. That's very powerful. Wow, I really love that, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's very strong stuff. Um, and I particularly love the way you uh, delivered that poem. Thank you. Very clear, very beautiful, yeah. Wow. So I think that I'm going to have to, if that's the style that you write in, I'm going to have to go buy your book now, I think, because I really like that. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah, you so I much. I love that, yeah. I want to read more of that, yeah, definitely. And I love that um, sometimes uh, poetry it can be a bit too loquacious and yes. worthy, and I don't really, I'm not too fond of that, to be honest. And I like that that's, um, that's quite direct, I find. Not mm. really beating around the, beating around the bush. Yeah, well, that's really lovely. Yeah. Wow. Thank Thanks you. so much for sharing. Definitely. My plan. And EJ, do you think it's your turn? Are you going to read us one? Yes, please do. Um, yeah. All right. Um, let me think about it. Well, mm -hmm. seeing that seeing that this uh, podcast is done by me and Dean, I think I might read out a poem about us, basically. Okay. It's called The Magic Bookshop. It's basically... Um, it's basically about the days when we lived in Belfast. So I, I don't live in Belfast in Northern Ireland anymore. Mm -hmm. But I used to live there and study. Now I now live in Spain. And basically, uh, Dean and I, we used to, whenever we could, go to this magic bookshop. It's a magic bookshop because it's actually run by a magician. So a self-proclaimed mm -hmm. magician. And, and he doesn't call it the magic bookshop. But basically, I mean, who can, who can blame me for giving it that name? Mm. And as soon as you enter that bookshop, it's basically just chaos, right? Then it's just chaos. It's just books everywhere, like three <laughs> piles of books, one top of each other. They're falling down. It, you, you can actually possibly drown. You could drown in, in the books, it. yeah. Wow, <laughs> that drown. sounds like my dream place. I've been on the it I've is, been on the is. floor, surrounded by hundreds of books in a mess, wow. just trying to find that one elusive book that I came in for. <laughs> Yeah, because you're just a literary, um, you know, archaeologist. That's how it feels like. You're just like I've actually had excavating. a dream like that, where I'm on the floor surrounded by books, trying to find a particular volume or something. It's, it's like nice. Wow. Okay. What? Well, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that's why it is space. And there were some unusual books. Like uh, I remember, you know, like um, for example, he had a copy of Stephen Hero, which is mm -hmm. which is like um, Stephen Hero is um, it's kind of like the first edition of the portrait. 
of a young man as an artist from James Joyce. Oh, and now okay. that book was famous, but no one knows, no one, not many people know that was redone by his early novel, Stephen Hero. And like, all of a sudden it's this very unusual novel there that everyone's forgotten about. It's just, it's just, it's just lovely. Yeah. And this uh, is called The Magic Bookshop. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to read it out. And it's just me thinking about that. And this one's for you, Dean. The Magic Bookshop. Nothing better I'd like to do today than walk aimlessly in Belfast city center with you. Wearing long coats that can't resist to rain, that interminably falls down upon us. We'd wear the wrong kind of shoes for the weather and the sun would appear in snippets. But when it does, when it did, wouldn't we appreciate her, that large bosomed girl, for a minute or less before the clouds obstruct her warmth. The maid is gone, but Sancho and Quixote must go on. So we continue our dandy walk uptown past charity shops, past tea shops and that busy post office. We'd enter the magic bookshop and talk would die out for a while. So busy, where would we be finding the right book? The unexpected book and the surprising book. A paperback, Agatha Christie. Penguin Classics, Katsuo Ishiguro. Irish books proud of being Irish. Silence, except for a moth seeking shelter from the rain. And a never-ending conversation between the magician and his apprentice in Ulster Irish. Keeping the dialect of their magician ancestors alive and active. Afterwards, we'd eat a pizza in a cafe that should serve tea. We'd talk about this and that. You'd make some ridiculous comments. I'd compliment it with another one. And when the pizzas arrived, the heat would dry our weather-beaten faces. Our books would lie on our laps like good-mannered children, dripping and drooling and crying happily. Our umbrellas would cause a huge scandal forming a pool of water all over the place. But a beautiful waitress would have seen it all before. And when she turned her Amazonian back, we'd sigh. Belfast has such beautiful moments. Nothing better I'd like to do on this sunny Saturday in Spain than walk aimlessly in Belfast city center with you, my friend, in the Irish rain. Beautiful. Oh, I it. love it. That's that's one of my favorites of yours, PJ. I, I, I really that's like it. That's beautiful, yeah. And Why don't I have, you tell I, I, I think I got lost in the narrative. <laughs> I, was, I was right there with you. <laughs> oh, thanks. There's, so there's two things like that it. always strike me in that. Number one is when yeah. you mentioned the Agatha Christie books, and I remember that I bought out every Agatha Christie book they had in that shop, yeah. <laughs> and mm. several did, bags yeah. full of them. And then also <laughs> with the uh, the scandal that our umbrellas caused, because I think we were the only two people that used umbrellas. Everyone else just got wet. You know, I don't, I didn't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> but, so yeah, so in, in Ireland they just it rains all the time, but like they seem to have just forgotten that it rained. It's that kind of common. And um, and like we, but we wouldn't have it. We wouldn't be accepting uh, mm-hmm. that. So we'd be carrying umbrellas. But I, I, I don't think we're exactly. like conscientious enough. Sorry. I don't think we're conscientious. No, I don't think we were like conscious enough at the time to uh-huh. like put the umbrellas neatly to the side. We just kind of brought them into the restaurant and it was dripping everywhere. And right. it was a huge scandal looking back. It's, it was, really was. We're, we're shocking, lads. But PJ, I remember I, I met you in town once and, uh, you know, you saw me in the distance before I saw you. And I said, how did you recognize me? And you said, well, you're the only person that carries an umbrella, you know? <laughs> wow, that's such a story. Oh, my God. I love that, you guys. That's quite a story. So let's yeah. That's it. Uh, Dina's got a, a great painting um, um, for that as well. So, yeah, I, I, I love you to see it. Maybe we can post it on the website or so. But it's just a, a lovely, a lovely painting. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it's lovely because basically the bookshop looks very warm inside, as if there were a small fire inside. Obviously, that would be absurd. And that's mm-hmm. the way the painting comes across. And then it's like rainy gray around it. It's contrast. Yeah, it's that, dark and rainy and cold outside and nice and kind of warm and inviting inside the magic bookshop. Yeah. And we've called it the magic yeah, bookshop for about 10 years now. And as you say, it is not called that. It's called Poetic It doesn't crisis. matter. 
<laughs> for the ice, exactly. Yeah. So PJ, let's have one more from our collection. So this poem is a poem I wrote about my daughter who lives in Russia uh, beside the Black Sea or close to the Black Sea. Uh, I wrote this in the summer and Dean uh, painted a painting and or he drew a sketch better and that goes along with the poem. In the Black Sea, my love, my child bathed, floating and drifting with little resistance, those minuscule caring waves, resembling a salty wet group of muttering hens, caressed her as she closed her eyes for an eternal moment or two. In the Black Sea, she floated on a turtle made out of air, the air that her mother supplied, the same air that I gave her, that gave her life turning her into a girl made out of air that could float too, gently swimming through the black air that seemed to fill the world so recently since long ago. In the black sea did my child, my love, swim with puppy strokes and pebbles stuck in her hair, the hair that I gave her as a gift so that she would outshine any star beneath, on, or above the wide black sea. Lovely stuff. And before we go, PJ, read us one of the Germanic poems you've been studying, please. All right. So I mentioned that um, I'm into German poetry right now, and I'm mentioning a bit more in the next episode as well. But just to give you a bit of a preview, talking about German identity, what Germany didn't exist, so Germany is a new country. Germany exists since uh, 1870. And uh, just like Italy was exists since 1861, I believe. And so these are European countries that didn't exist for a long time, but they had the idea of Germany and Italy, which is very different to a place like Russia, for example, which was existed for a long time were one big empire. Germany and Italy, there were small states and they were often in conflict. Or sometimes they were friends, but they just wanted their own thing. But in, during the Romantic period, Romanticism in the late 18th century, beginning of 19th century, poets like the most famous German poets, like, for example, Friedrich von Schiller and Goethe and Novalis, they started to form a, a German identity. But Germany didn't exist. So basically, poetry was a way of bringing everyone together. Just the same way uh, a lot of these people from that period, the Grimm brothers and Hans Christian Andersen, they started to collect folk tales and children's tales because those were from the people. So it's all about the people coming together and forming one specific identity. And what I have for you here is, I might recite another poem in the next episode, but I'm going to give you a minor romantic uh, German poet and talk about Briefly recite this small, beautiful poem I like, and I'll recite it in German and then in English. Don't worry. This poem is called Moonlit Night. Es war, als hätte der Himmel die Erde still geküsst, dass sie im Blütenschimmer von ihm nun träumen musst. Die Luft ging durch die Felder, die Ehren wogten sacht. Es rauschten leis die Wälder, so sternklar war die Nacht. Und meine Seele spannte weit ihre Flügel aus, flog durch den stillen Land, als flöge sie nach Haus. In Englisch. This poem is called Moonlit Night. It was as though the sky had quietly kissed the earth so that she in the glory of blossom now had to dream of him. The breeze went across the fields, the ears of corn waved gently. The woods rustled softly, the night was so starry clear. And my soul stretched its wings wide and flew through the tranquil counties as though it was flying home. 
So that poem is by Josef, Josef von Eichendorf. Well, guys, I think that's us. Oh, it's really been lovely talking to you, son. Um, Same really here. enjoyed it. Absolutely. It's been Thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. All Thank right, you fine. so much. Well, quick bit of housekeeping before we wrap up. Guys, please go to booksboys.com. There's some links there to our social media, to all the different places that you can follow the show. And, of course, wherever you're listening, give us a wee five-star review. That would be amazing. Tell your friends. And, of course, come back next time for another episode of Books Boys. We are going to take you out with a poem by an old friend of mine, a veteran podcaster, Wiggly, and a poem he wrote many years ago called Inspired by a Brief Glimpse. It's been a favorite of mine for 10, 15 years, so I'm going to I'm going to read it um, and then of course we'll have our credits. Expecting nothing, the universe opens itself to us. From the smallest is conceived the infinite. What before was not, now is. What was dream becomes the manifest. From the simplest to the most profound, all sides seek to balance, possessing elements of their complement. Realizing that without the background, there is no foreground, the complexity of the most basic exalted here for any to be joined, a complete and ever-changing love. The joy of life circulates, nothing to fight, accepting and aware of our choices and conscious of our decisions. Above everything, beneath none, humble as a servant, wise as a master, gracious to receive, giving everything. This moment, we are all. This moment, all is us. And we realize, we never die. The moment we accept, we do not exist. Books Boys was presented by The Dean and PJ Burke in association with Thaddeus Penguin Productions. This episode was brought to you by The Written Word. If you would like to get in touch, you can email us at booksboys at hotmail.com or visit us at booksboys.com. The intro uses Driving in the 70s from the Of Soundtracks and Garage Bands EP by Trapdoor. And the outro uses Dog's Light by Bravo Max from the album of the same name. All music used is either pod safe or used with permission. If you're in the US and you would like to purchase any of our recommendations, please use the Amazon links for your book purchases and the Audible link on our website for your audio book purchases and help support the show. Thank you kindly for listening to us. Please tell your friends and come back next time for another episode of Books Boys. Read some books! I think, yeah, I had it on my, I had it as my desktop background, and that's been the Magic Bookshop from Stone Age to Rome, and right now I have the Cat Cammy and the Mouse. Yeah, so I always use your paintings, yeah. That might be my favorite, together with the, with the Office Clerk Frog. That is awesome, that one. <laughs>